Yeah, I think um, it, the, the definition's always been quite a hard thing for us. And I think in the industry as a whole, we always get so many different um, inputs as to what is experiential marketing. I know that the staff always have a problem and they're talking to their mums and dads about what is it that we do. Mm -hmm. um, because it's quite, uh, it's a new field for New Zealand, I think. Um, we're definitely in a very immature market here. Um, the UK, uh, the US and Australia certainly has a lot of uh, experiential marketing, so they certainly work around it. But in its purest form, um, experiential marketing creates an emotional connection um, via live interaction. Um, and that's out in the field, um, that's through, with it. it's a variety of different things. It can be a stunt, it could be a brand activation at a, at a shopping mall. It could be something that uh, a sponsorship leverage work that's happening at a sport event or a music event, anything that even goes down to as far as sampling. But in its, in its purest form, it's something that engages the senses. It's something that has uh, the consumer um, or the brand interacting together um, on an emotional level, using all their senses, their sight, their feeling, their, their touching, their playing with the brand. Um, and it's a lot about play. Um, and I guess the, the ideal word would be something like brand theatre is exactly what we're trying to do here. Great. Um, so could you tell me a little bit more about EMANS? Yeah, so EMANS is the Experiential Marketing Association of New Zealand. We formed up um, about seven years ago. The top agencies in New Zealand got together and kind of realised that it was quite a new um, form of marketing and it wasn't very well understood, but even now it's still, it's still a bit of a challenge. But, um, and we also saw that there were a lot of agencies out there kind of doing stuff a bit ad hoc, doing things a little bit cheeky, doing some guerrilla stuff that was a little bit illegal and that was giving the industry a bit of a bad name. So we got together um, and we decided to form a code of conduct, um, which obviously gives us a, a remit to provide the best work. And that involves us working closely with councils, working closely with a lot of the event owners, with shopping malls, um, working with um, insurance companies, all the people to make sure that everything co is covered off safely and properly with the brand activation, that we're not doing anything legal, uh, anything that's going to have the police come in if we're doing something a bit naughty and a bit cheeky. Um, and I guess also it was formed so that we could kind of showcase best practice through awards and um, as they do around the rest, rest of the world. So in order to do that we hooked up with CANS and the um, PR, Social and Experiential Committee and we have uh, worked with them to get an EFI award category for PR and Experiential and an Access award category and also uh, at the Beacons which is the Media Award as well. So we're really there to showcase um, the best work and to make sure that our clients and that includes PR agencies, brands, government departments, all of those people know that they've got a good safe pair of hands uh, when you're working with an EMANS agency. It's almost like a stamp of approval. Mm -hmm. um, what we also, uh, we've now got 25 agencies uh, and companies within that agreement now. And we get together every, uh, we have a committee that gets together every month and we discuss the latest issues and, and problems. And then we have a gathering uh, once a month where we get a speaker along to talk um, about some, some of the highlights within the industry. Great. Yeah. Um, so tell me, how does experiential work with PR? Yeah, and I think um, it's a really interesting um, relationship actually. I think um, experiential is the perfect fit and, and, and hence why a lot of PR agencies have their own events department, if you will. I, th I don't think they'd necessarily call it an experiential department, but they would certainly um, call it um, an activation department or an events department internally. And what, what experiential marketing does and an experiential campaign can do is create a really good story. It's something that uh, PR can hang their hook on, um, whether that be a stunt, whether it be something that's happening uh, at a sporting event, as I mentioned earlier, or at, or at a music festival. It's um, a bit of live theatre that creates a story. And that story then comes down to the PR agency's job to amplify that. When you do an experiential campaign, we really don't want it to just live in isolation. We don't want it to just be at the Warriors or to be um, you know, a one-off event that you've seen on the street or stunt. We want it to be amplified, and that amplification is key. It's key because it creates and generates a really positive word of mouth about that brand or that product or that service, um, and then it can get shared. So obviously with digital now and obviously um, with digital press, social media, um, you know, these channels can really amplify the work that we do. And amplification works in spreading that positive word, but also gives us a tool to measure what we've done. So that if our brand activation, our brand experience that we've created has been a success, we'll know there'll be loads of column inches. 
We'll know that it's been spread around the world. We'll know people have been talking about it on their social chatter. They'll be tweeting about it. They'll be sharing photos that they went. They'll be taking photos with their mobile phone. And PR helps us to, as an experimental agency, we don't have that ability to have those contacts to help that amplification process. But most of our campaigns now um, will have a, a PR element to them. Um, and whether that, that could even be linking with a radio promo mm -hmm. or something like that that we've worked with a PR agency on. Um, and then I think uh, over the last two to three years particularly, we're being engaged by a lot of PR agencies to, to, do, um, to bring their creative idea to life, mm -hmm. to make sure that it's run properly in the right location with the highest foot forward to get that, all of those people down there to create a really good event and then they will follow up with the with the PR and the media after that and grabbing that earned media. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes. Um, so could you give me a couple of examples of recent campaigns that use experiential? Yeah, I think um, on that social um, media front, I think you know what we're finding is that I mean we've even got our own social media department now within within this business because we know that every activation, you know, using mobile now, everything that you do can be shared and we want it to go viral. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think two of the campaigns that, that I've seen lately, the first one is um, the Bring Down the King campaign, which um, the guys from Mango did, which was about um, the Game of Thrones, obviously with uh, King Joffrey down at Aotea Square. So they of course had a, a giant statue down there, which was fantastic, which was getting enough noise anyway by people just kind of coming out of the theatres and going, this is fantastic, what's going on here, I can, this is King Joffrey, I can see what's happening there. So there was already some buzz, there was, there was stuff going on with mobile. Uh, and then obviously the, the PR angle and the social angle pushed that out so that media were tweeting about it, people were tweeting and the whole idea was to bring down the king using Twitter, um, which is a great idea. So it was like creating, I think, uh, and this is something that's, that's trending very much with, um, with brand experience now, is getting people who aren't even at the brand experience at the site to interact. So there were people sitting at home who would have seen something through the press and all of a sudden they're twittering and tweeting around, they're sort of trying to bring down the king. Um, and that had massive results, not just here, but also overseas for the launch of, of Game of Thrones. Um, I can't remember the full stats, but it completely blew away their KPIs. And I think the whole thing about PR and, and, and social, as I said, again, if you can set those KPIs, as this is what our client wants us to achieve out of this, we want so many tweets, we want so many column inches, then that brand activation and us as an agency can then be measured and we can tick all the boxes to go, yep, we achieved what we were trying to do with that brand activation. Because in the past, a lot of brand experience campaigns were just kind of left out there as a bit of fun, something fluffy to do, but now it's becoming more of an integrated approach and now it's getting uh, properly measured and obviously setting some good KPIs. So that's one. Um, I think obviously the, the big one for the last, last couple of years has been the Mini Driving Dogs or Mini and SPCA Driving Dogs. And again, a really good creative idea that came out of the PR team and, and, the, and, the, and the draft team that was then brought to life through very, very good activation that was really thought through. So um, again, the challenge of um, working with a good experiential marketing agency is that you've got to make sure it works. You know, your brand can look stupid out there if it goes wrong. At the worst, you know, let's say King Joffrey fell over and hurt somebody. You know, it's making sure that the people who are running these things are experienced. And I guess that's something with, with the Experiential Marketing Association. Our guys have obviously got decades of experience in, in running these things. But uh, Driving Dogs, again, a very quirky little uh, campaign to do. But once uh, the PR plan was put into place, that obviously went globally viral and it was such a huge successful, a hugely successful campaign for them, um, both for Mini and SPCA I think. Um, they really thought that through, um, the idea was really well produced and then the amplification was great. Mm -hmm.